This afternoon, Honda shocked the world with the launch of the all-new Honda CBR1000RRR Fireblade and the CBR1000RRR Fireblade SP. Launching the new model before ICMA officially began was an interesting and successful marketing tactic for Honda because there were no other brands fighting for attention today, letting them soak up the spotlight. But back to the bike. In this video, we're gonna go through an overview of Honda's brand new super sport bike, really focusing on the new engine, chassis, electronics, and aerodynamics that make this bike stand out from the crowd. But before we jump in officially, I wanna point out that the war of the wings is heating up. The Ducati VR4 has two wings. The new Ducati Street Fighter V4 has four wings. Well, the new Honda CBR 1000 RRR SP has six wings. Yep, six winglets to generate downforce, but more on that technology to come. To move forward, you have to know the past. So let's quickly touch on the history now. Since its original 1992 introduction, Honda's iconic Fireblade has evolved into an incredible 1000cc sports motorcycle. It has also been the base of a competitive race machine on short circuits around the world and the roads of the Isle of Man TT. But time and con competition marches on, and for 2020, Honda is drawing a line under where the CBR1000RR Fireblade has been, and looking forward to where it's going. Two brand new motorcycles, the CBR1000RRR Fireblade and the CBR1000RRR SP Fireblade have been created with heavy involvement from Honda Racing Corporation to carry the legend forward. Leaning heavily on the engine and chassis technology of the RC213 V3S, which is the street legal MotoGP machine, with aerodynamics drawn from the RC213 V MotoGP bike, the new Fireblade has been designed from the ground up in terms of engine, handling, and aerodynamics for outright track performance. Now, let's talk about the engine. All of this is only a portion of what's in the brief from Honda. This bike is an engineer's wet dream, and I implore you to take a read through it if this is your sort of thing. Well, the CBR1000RRR engine delivers 113 newton meters at 12,500 RPMs and makes peak power of 160 kilowatts at 14,500 RPMs. For the fine American folks out there, 160 kilowatts is roughly 214.56 mechanical horsepower. To put that into perspective, the 2020 Ducati Panigale V4S makes 214 horsepower and carries a $32,000 price tag in the US. To achieve the required valve size, combustion efficiency, and friction reduction to generate these numbers, the RRR engine shares the same over square 81 millimeter bore and 48.5 millimeter stroke as the RC213V, a radical change from the 76 by 55.1 millimeter of the previous design, and the largest bore size among inline four cylinder 1000cc machines. Compression ratio is set at 13 to one. The inlet valves are 32.5 mm diameter with 28.5 mm exhaust. They are also now operated by finger follower walk rocker arms as opposed to bucket valve drive, which reduces inertial weight by approximately 75%. Friction is further reduced by the use of diamond-like carbon DLC, on the cam lobes, just like the RC213VS. This is the first time that in this process has been used on a mass produced motorcycle and sees a reduction in the valve train frictional loss of 35% compared to the non DLC coated lobes. To reduce crankshaft deflection due to inertia and combustion energy, the crank journals are larger and the crankcase wall's thickness has been optimized. By using all sorts of fancy titanium, Honda has saved weight across the conrods and conrod caps. The pistons are also forged from aluminum for lightweight strength and durability, and each piston is now 5% lighter than it was before. To manage temperature increase, the pistons use a multi-point piston jet, which sprays cooling oil in multiple directions through each cycle. At low RPM when not needed, check balls within the jet shut off the flow of oil in order to limit oil pressure loss and reduce friction. Air is fed into the engine via ram air duct located at the high surface pressure tip of the front fairing. The size of its aperture is equivalent to that of the RC213V MotoGP machine, 
A ribbed turbulator to the right, left, and above the duct entrance ensures maximum induction of moving air with minimum impact on handling. The draft angle of the aperture's interior wall maintains flow under high speed and acceleration. I guess you could say that the new fire blade is ribbed for your pleasure. Let me know if you got that joke below in the comments. To maintain stable performance across the wide speed range, pressurized air takes a straight shot from the headstock, around the steering stem, and into the airbox. This smooth path is made possible by the application of Honda's smart key system, dispensing with a traditionally mounted ignition barrel and steering angle of 25 degrees. Akrapovic partnered in development of the exhaust end can. Construction from titanium, its small physical size and lightweight contribute to mass centralization and right side lean angle. The exhaust valve was also designed with Akrapovic to deliver both low RPM torque and high RPM power. A valve stopper, which is patent pending, stops exhaust gas leak when closed while also reducing noise, allowing total in-can internal volume to reduce by 38% compared to the outgoing design. Minimizing friction elsewhere in the RRR engine was a key focus in obtaining the increase in rev range. To reduce bore distortion and thus friction, the cylinder features a patent pending built-in bottom bypass. This system circulates cool water from the radiator into the main water jacket, which allows the area below you to use non-cooled water. The net effect is a lower, more even temperature at all points across the bores compared to the previous engine. An external hose is also eliminated. To reduce width, the engine is started by rotation of the clutch's main shaft rather than the crankshaft. Patent pinning, this design allows for a more compact crankshaft while doubles use of primary driven gear which itself is smaller with fuel, fewer teeth. To also transmit rotation from the starter motor saves space. The engine is shorter in length thanks to reduction in distances between the crankshaft, countershaft, and main shafts. The rear of the engine blocks also now serves as the upper shock mount. Like I said earlier, this is an engineer's wet dream. There is so much going on with this engine, this is only just a small sliver of what's in the brief. But that's it for the engine now. Let's jump onto the chassis. The reduction in physical size of the CBR 1000 RRR's engine opened up a new packaging options around it for the new frame and swing arm, with completely revised geometry. The goals, even more accurate high speed steering, improved stability under acceleration and braking, and fuel for the front and rear grip on the limit, and at the very highest level of competition. The diamond frame is constructed from 2mm aluminum and allows much more accurate tuning of the rigidity balance and manufacturer. After the four main frame components are welded, the engine now mounts in six locations improving machine handling. Vertical and torsional rigidity are increased by 18% and 9%, with horizontal rigidity decreased by 11%, all aimed at producing maximum levels of feel. Wheelbase is now longer than before by 50 millimeters to 1,455 millimeters. What weight is now 201 kilograms. There have also been considered changes to balance and the center of gravity. The crankshaft is 33 millimeters further from the front wheel spindle and raised 16 millimeters. This evens out weight distribution while the higher center of gravity improves side to side agility. For optimal frame rigidity and to save weight, the top mount of the ProLink rear suspension attaches to the rear of the engine block via a bracket, doing away with the upper cross member. This also isolates the rear wheel from the headstock, improving high speed stability and feel for the rear wheel traction. Round, thin wall aluminum tubing forms the minimal subframe. It also mounts to the frame from the top rather than the sides to narrow the area around the rear of the fuel tank and seat, making for a compact and aerodynamically efficient riding position. Seat height is now 830 millimeters with the handlebar position pushed forward for leverage and foot pegs move rearward and up. The CBR 1000 RRR is also equipped with Showa's new Honda Electronic Steering Dampener, HESD, a lightweight th through rod design that mounts on the bottom of the steering stem and attaches to the bottom yoke. The HESD is controlled by input from the wheel speed sensors and IMU. Three levels of control are available. With its large dampening volume, the Showa 43mm Big Piston Fork, also known as BPF, 
Inverted telescopic fork effectively reduces the hydraulic pressure generated under compression and extension. This results in reduced play during the inertial stroke and smoother dampening, maximizing tire contact with the tarmac. Spring preload and rebound compression dampening are fully adjustable, and for the RRR, the fork is longer in length than before, allowing more freedom for geometry changes trackside. The rear shock is fully adjustable Showa Balance Free Rear Cushion Light, BFRC light. Instead of a conventional single tube layout, the BFRC light uses a double tube design. The dampener caught case and internal cylinder. The damper piston has no valves. Instead, the dampening force is generated as displaced oil passes through the separate dampening component. This allows pressure changes within the shock to be smoothly controlled. Damping response and reaction to be improved. The dampening force to function smoothly during load input. Moreover, dampening weight is generated consistently from switching from rebound to compression due to even pressure changes. New Nissan 4-piston radial mount front brake calipers are fitted, which offer more rigidity with reduced weight, and grip 10mm larger 330mm diameter disc. Braking power is improved for track use. The 5mm disc thickness also dissipates heat more efficiently. The rear brake caliper is the same Brembo unit by the RC2113VS. Rear lift control and ABS managed brake force relative to the lean angle were a feature of the previous design. For the CBR1000RRR, the system gains two switchable modes. Sport mode focuses on road riding performance with high brake force and less pitching, while track mode offers performance and braking for much higher circuit speeds. The rear 17-inch rim has a new hub geometry. To save weight while maintaining rigidity and mounts a 255 ZR17 size tire, while minimizing the change in the chassis geometry when going from street to track rubber, the front rim mounts a 120 by 70 ZR17 tire. Now, enough talking about the chassis, let's go on to the aerodynamics. Alongside its new engine and chassis, the CBR1000RRR has a new aggressive new fairing design. It's no mere styling exercise, however. The drivers in development that were to create a class leading drag coefficient with a tucked in rider under track conditions and restrict lift under acceleration while improving braking stability. The first part of the process was to lower the fuel tank cover by 45 millimeters compared to the previous design, decreasing the frontal area with the rider prone. At a 35 degree angle, the screen smoothly channels airflow from the upper fairing over the rider and seat cowl, which itself presents the minimum possible drag resistance. The left and right upper fairing slits reduce yaw and roll resistance while turning. To make steering easier, a convex surface on each side of the front mudguard moves airflow away from the front wheel, smoothly directing it to the fairing sides. Cooling air for radiator and oil cooler has been optimized by aerodynamic management of both velocity and pressure of air flowing from the tire. The lower fairing has been extended close to the rear tire and shaped to channel air downward. This has two effects. In dry conditions, less air hits the tire, lowering drag. In the wet, less water hits the tire, improving grip. To let air flow around the rider's feet with minimum resistance, the sides of the rear hugger are carefully shaped while its upper side is cut out to the vent air that channels up from beneath either side of the swing arm, decreasing rear lift. The net result of all this work, with the CBR1000RRR and stock race trim, it's a best-in-class drag coefficient value at 0.270. To generate downforce at track speeds and maintain the smallest possible frontal area, the CBR1000RRR employs a winglet structure that effectively generates the same downforce as the 2018 RC213V MotoGP machine. The results are a reduction in wheelies under acceleration and increased stability on braking and corner entry. Three wings are arranged in a vertical line inside both left and right fairing ducts. This arrangement, vertically deep and longitudinally shallow, has no detrimental effect on yaw and roll ability during corner entry, and the consistent distance between the trailing wing tips and interfering wall limits separations of the airflow, producing maximum downforce. The wing angle balances opposing right and left downforces from the dihedral and twist angles when yaw occurs through a corner, for stable behavior. Flow speeds over the top and below the wings differ to prevent air getting trapped on the fairing sides 
and affecting handling. Yeah, a lot of big terms in those last few sentences. I know, I had to like break out the Google to figure out what some of the yees and yaws meant, but let's jump on to the electronics. For full and intuitive control of the CBR1000RRR system, the full color 5 inch TFT screen is larger with higher resolution. It's fully customizable to show exactly what the rider wants to see. The compact left hand switch gear houses a four way switch, fast and easy to use. The top bottom button set riding mode parameters, while the left right button cycles a screen display information. Honda's smart key system has been added. The ignition now operates without having to insert a key, as does handlebars lock. This is both convenient in day-to-day -day use and has been allowed to use as comp competition-style top yoke while freeing up for optimal space for the RAM air system. A Bosch 6-axis inertial measurement unit, IMU, replaces the 5-axis unit of the previous design. This allows more accurate calculations of the pinch and roll of even more precise control of the bike's behavior. Now, for the extra money, what do you get for the premium spec Fireblade SP? Well, the front fork and rear shock have been exchanged for the olds all the way around. Yep, a telescopic inverted fork with an inner diameter of 43 millimeters and owns NPX Smart EC with preload, compression, and rebound adjustments, and a ProLink with gas charge owns TTX 36 Smart EC dampener featuring preload, compression, and rebound dampening in the rear. Brembo brakes are still at the rear, but there is now a 330 millimeter disc with a four piston Brembo caliper up front. The optional quick shifter on the normal fire blade is a standard feature on the SP, and that's about all. Now, this video is coming to an end, and I don't even know how long it is right now, but if you've made it this far, thank you. Applaud yourself, pat yourself on the back, maybe go to the Honda dealer and put a down deposit on this bike. But now the video is over, I want to know your thoughts on Honda's new bike in the comments below. Will it be able to beat the top of the line R1M from Yamaha, or the Ducati V4R, or BMW's S1000RR? I guess this Honda does have more R's than that BMW does, but who knows. Is this the bike to beat for 2020? Is this the bike to beat for ICMA? Let me know in the comments below.